What's going on, comic fans? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Hope everyone has been staying safe and sound. It's a very crazy time in 2020, um, but thankfully we can all have our little escapes with our comic books. Today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite writers and what I think are his best works that I've read personally. Um, I haven't read everything Brian K. Vaughan has done, but I've read most of it, and um, I absolutely love this man's writing. He's written some of the best creator-owned stories ever, in my opinion, um, and I want to talk about them. So that's what we're going to do this video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, guys. Um, this is what we do. We post vid videos regularly. Hopefully, be doing live streams again real soon. So uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know whenever we post a new video. Starting with one of the newer creator-owned series that Brian K. Vaughn had worked on, Paper Girls. Uh, he, he collaborated with artist Cliff Chang on this series. Absolutely fantastic. It takes place in the late 80s um and basically it follows this group of paper girls you know they, they they have a paper route they do their thing they're all biking around um this group of girls aaron tiffany kj and mackenzie um they're basically out on halloween and uh things start to get insane in the world um is it aliens is it interdimensional beings i don't want to spoil anything things get absolutely insane and incredible um the artwork by cliff chang is spectacular and brian kivon is is really doing something great here he's taking you back in time um i was personally born in, in 93 so um you know uh not in the same timeline necessarily, but a, a lot of the things happening in this book were still happening when I was a kid. And uh, it's really, it's really, really cool to see sort of, um, you know, get that sort of flashback to a simpler time where, uh, where there were these problems that are no longer problems for us, right? And especially with all the craziness that happens in the book, getting to learn more about these girls and what they've been through already in their lives and what's happening with their family members and other relationships uh, within their lives. It's, it's spe spectacular. Again, with absolutely stunning artwork, um, you know, Brian K. Vaughn is the, the kind of writer who uh, excels when it comes to, you know, the first page you see when you open a comic book and the last page you see before you close it that keeps you going every single time. His stories overall are fantastic, but man, when it comes to cliffhangers and, and opening pages, there's nobody better in the business than Brian K. Vaughn. Um, in front of me, I got the first deluxe edition for Paper Girls. Really nice color. I love this pink aesthetic. Overall, the design itself is beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the second one. It's at Matt's house right now in the in the States. I got to pick that up soon, but I'm very excited to have that in my hands as well. If you're a fan of like the late 80s and overall just um, really having a good time while reading comic books, if, you know, similar to Stranger Things um, in various ways. Uh, it's got, again, the fantasy aspect of it, but definitely way more sci-fi and way more trippy. Um, but it, it, in general, the world and the atmosphere is very much like Stranger Things. So if you're a fan of that, you'll definitely be a fan of Paper Girls. Next book is one that I don't physically own yet, but I have read digitally and absolutely loved. It is Pride of Baghdad uh, with the artist Nico Henrique and working with Brian K. Vaughn on this one. It's a story about this pride of lions um, who find themselves, you know, at the start of the story they're in a zoo and it's based on um you know the the events of 2003 when um the, the u.s army you know bombed iraq and and it's sort of a, the story of these lines that broke out of the baghdad zoo during that it's uh it, it's really something special it's very very powerful um not not a super long story either it's definitely a short story that you can read in uh, one sitting but you're getting everything from the perspective of these lines um you know there's communicating to each other in, in an english that we can understand you know sort of like any really any movie that has animals uh, communicating and you get to see you know how they interact with other animals within the zoo amongst each other you get to see their history from be before they were in the zoo um and then you get to see their adventure once they get out of the zoo right and uh it's it's a very very powerful story because you see them interact with other animals and you get little bits and pieces of history surrounding um you know surrounding the the area that they're all in baghdad and babylon and all that it's a uh, it's it's really quite quite special um it, you know telling it from the perspective of animals definitely leaves a, a huge impact in the artwork the artwork is absolutely breathtaking um it's it's so well done the detail's amazing, the way the animals move. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried drawing an animal. Not easy at all. <laughs> um, so, I mean, a, a book that's almost entirely animal-based. Uh, really, really imp impressive work by uh, by Nico. Um, I, I really must say it's so beautiful, and the colors are spectacular as well. Um, and the story is really, uh, really, really something special. Looking at sort of the idea of freedom and, uh, and questioning, is it better to be uh, free, but, you know... It, 
wandering through chaos or is it better to be caged with some order and uh, and, and you know uh, the benefits that come with being a, a slave and sort of kept safe in some way shape or form um, very 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 great book that really makes you wonder uh, about multiple things that you know happen pretty regularly in our world. Um, so I, I really must give my hats off to Brian K. Vaughan. It's a spectacular story, Pride of Baghdad. Be sure to check it out. There's a deluxe edition and trade paperbacks for it um, that I don't think have ever been too difficult to find. So um, be sure to check that out if you're interested in a very, very powerful story starring some fantastic animals. Private Eye, one of the few books that I own that is almost impossible to put anywhere on the shelf so you sort of always have to have it facing outwards uh, which is not a problem it's got a great cover it's a funky looking book and uh, it's a great book it's a great book it's one of the um, one of the many uh, I think two or three times Marcos Martin has worked with Brian K. Vaughan um, working on uh, titles sort of like this where you know they started it off as a, a pay what you want I believe there were 10 issues released strictly digitally and it was sort of a, a pay what you want to get the issue kind of deal and uh, eventually they through Image Comics published this hardcover edition they called the cloud burst edition um, which is in this really cool format wide widescreen panel uh, widescreen page layout um, really really great story that follows this private detective a pi a private eye uh, patrick immelman uh, is the code name he goes under it's and it's it's in a world that um, you know all of our data is stored in the cloud and in this world that cloud was basically exposed to the public entirely so people had all information about everyone from all times and uh, you know people start now have started creating um, wearing wearing covers wearing masks wearing hologram uh, costumes as well all this, all sorts of insanity in this world and basically you know a uh, this character, our, our private eye, our PI character, is a is an investigator. That's what he does. He's a paparazzi. He tries to you know get information or, or get pictures or whatever it may be that his clients need, and um, you get to see him interact with so many characters in the world as you uh, you see the world expand and this, and he he gets thrown into this crazy crazy murder mystery and it's it's really beautifully illustrated by Marcos Martin. I love his style. The colors are also brilliant. They add so much. Uh, you know, neon and, and vibrant excitement to the world. Uh, it's really, really well done. I love the format it's into. And at 10, 10 issues, you're getting a fairly lengthy story too. So it'll, uh, you know, there's a lot to sink your teeth into. And um, it's great. If you get this hardcover edition, there's great bonus content about sort of um, the two gentlemen emailing each other back and forth and, uh, and how they were sort of, you know, pitching the idea and all that stuff. Really cool, really great. If you can pick up the Cloudburst edition, I really, really highly recommend it. We Stand On Guard, I've already spoken about this uh, fantastic mini-series in another another video, but I'll talk about it again because it's got a little bit of Canada in it, which is always something I'm a fan of. Uh, this was uh, Brian K. Vaughan working with Steve Scroce. Scroach, Scroce, Scroce, I always forget. Uh, but it was a six-issue mini-series published through Image Comics, and the story is essentially about uh, Canada and U.S. at war. One day the USA bombs Canada and the, the two countries get to go, go to war with each other and it follows a group of Canadians. Uh, they're the, the only Canadian freedom fighters who call themselves the 2-4 and it sort of follows this mission that they're on uh, to not only survive, but try and liberate Canada from, from the U.S. tyranny that is threatening them. And uh, it's a great story. You get to learn a lot about these characters. You fall in love with them, which is, you know, a curse of Brian K. Vaughan is he makes you fall in love with these characters. Uh, he makes you hate them a little bit um, and then makes you love them again and uh, then takes takes some of them away from you. I'm not going to spoil what happens here, but it's a it's a recurring pattern in Brian K. Vaughan stories. Not everybody's going to make it, and it's going to hurt. Um, he writes characters so damn well, and he makes them so relatable, so personable, throwing in little scenes like the one with Superman, um, you know, talking about the origin of Superman in this one. It's great. It's great, especially as a Canadian. You know, there's uh, not too many comics uh, centered around Canada, I guess, or involving Canada, so it's really cool when, when one is sort of a, a rep in the country a little bit. Um, we stand on guard. The artwork as well is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, beautiful, beautiful work, uh, really. I mean, Brian K. Vaughan gets incredible, incredible artists. Um, and so We Stand on Guard, I highly recommend it. It's a quick six-issue read, great story uh, that I'm sure you'll return to. 
Another book that I no longer own, I had to sell the Omnibus a while back ago, is Ex Machina. This was a Vertigo Wildstorm series. I apologize. It was a Wildstorm series written by Brian Kivon, of course, with artwork by Tony Harris, another great, great artist who wrote, who did some amazing work on Ex Machina. Um, it was a fairly lengthy run. There's a huge Omnibus for it, collecting all 40-ish issues or however many it is. Um, basically, what you're getting with the story is uh, a man named Mitchell Hundred who, uh, you know, after the events of 9-11 and the events of 9-11, um, being a, a, doing something super heroic, uh, he decides he's going to run to be the mayor of New York. And uh, that's sort of where the story picks up. What's really cool about the story, again, like I said with uh, with one of the earlier books, is Brian Kivon is so good at doing the opening section and closing it out with an incredible cliffhanger. And Ex Machina is full, full, full of those um, uh, it's it's sort of a, one of the books that a lot some people disagree on and, and they dislike. I really enjoyed it. You know, I'm I don't get too involved in politics, and so having a book where you're getting to sort of see the the mayor aspect of it and the interactions he has and the public relations side of it and the media side of it and all the craziness that goes the policy side of things, of course, and all the craziness that goes with it um, is really really interesting for one. And then number two, you're getting all these different flashbacks to different times. You're getting the present. You're getting the past. Um, it's great. It's it's really, really great. It keeps you constantly entertained, always feeding you new information about the character and other characters within his life. And of course, Mitchell Hundred was able to do what he did uh, during 9-11 because of um, some alien technology he ran across. So you start learning about that history and, and what's happened to him um, and how he lost his ability to use that and all sorts of things. Uh, very, very fascinating book. Um, I really liked it. It's a great solid run too. At times it does feel like it's dragging on a bit, but overall a really interesting story again i don't read too many political comic books so it was a definitely a nice change of pace for me ex machina if you can pick up that omnibus i highly recommend you do now beyond what i can just say next for saga a testament to how good this title is is the fact that i've brought it up multiple times already it is such a spectacular spectacular book and um, it's the reason I wanted to talk about Brian K. Vaughan because he writes so many incredible, incredible creator-owned series. I'm sorry, guys, but if you're waiting for me to mention his Swamp Thing run or Runaways, I'm not going to. They're great. They're good comic books, but they're nowhere near as good as his creator-owned stuff. Um, absolutely brilliant. Saga is one of the books that I personally really, really love because it's... Uh, it, it's so relatable with so much fantasy and craziness surrounding it. Um, you know, usually when you try to relate to things you're looking for, even visually similar, physically, uh, you know, relatable objects. But I mean, with, with Saga, it's all about the characters and the personalities and the problems and sort of merging this high fantasy and, and crazy sci-fi with, with realities and truths that we all experience. Um, and it's really beautifully done. I mean, you know, with Fiona Staples artwork, especially uh, the, the two, the two creators here just make something unbelievably special. It follows uh, basically three characters I guess you could say three main characters Alana Marco and their daughter Hazel Alana and Marco are from opposing uh, worlds basically and um, well not worlds <laughs> The, a world and its moon colony are essentially at war with each other and Marco and Alana each come from an opposing faction. They fall in love, they have a child, and both empires are now chasing after them, sending assassins, sending mercenaries after them. All sorts of craziness uh, happens. Of course, like I've mentioned with other books, the opening pages and the end and the cliffhangers that Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples deliver are like nothing you've seen before. Um, Brian K. Vaughan is also criminally good at making these seemingly family-friendly books uh, get extremely perverse and extremely adulterated very, very quickly. If you guys have read Saga and you know about the dragon, you remember the dragon. Um, just one little thing, one, one thing that happens in the, it's absolute insanity, but it's, it's so beautifully told with amazing characters, spectacular dialogue, um, and a story that again, keeps you wanting more 52 issues total or 54. I apologize. Um, but they're supposed to do pretty much that number again at some point. We'll see when that happens because Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples left us on such a huge cliffhanger, just left us all hanging. Um, I really hope we get to see more Saga. The last series I'm going to mention is Why the Last Man, a huge, huge Vertigo series that uh, Brian K. Vaughan did with artist Pia Guerra. 
also uh, I've got the deluxe editions in front of me five of them total collecting all 60 issues of the series there was also uh, of course the three absolute editions and there is supposedly a compendium coming out later this year that will collect uh, I believe the first half of the series maybe even the whole thing I forget but that'll be coming in a you know a trade paperback compendium real thick thick sandwich of a book um, why the last man was uh, I think what really made Brian K Vaughn come to the forefront. I mean, uh, it's it's definitely his most epic work. Um, it follows a character named Yorick Brown, who's uh, a 20-something year old. He's not really doing much with his life, um, training to be a magician, the, the, the best magician in all the land. Um, and he, uh, essentially what happens is, is every mammal and every animal with a Y chromosome uh, dies, uh, except for Yorick and his pet monkey Ampersand. And so now Yorick becomes this, you know, this this specimen that potentially has the cure to the the disease that has ridden the world of 50 percent of the men you know the economy's crumbling businesses are crashing um you know it, the world's falling into a state of chaos and the women start to pick up pick up the slack a little bit but uh, you get to see york's crazy adventures as he deals with you know mad mad scientists women amazonians biker gangs um all sorts of craziness uh it's it's an absolutely wonderful exploration of an idea um you know brian kivon again with the cliffhangers and the way he writes dialogue he keeps everything so compelling all the time why the last man is one of those theory, uh, stories where things do get drawn out a little bit but i think he's you know he's he's dealing with some interesting ideas and uh, interesting thoughts you know debating between uh, the necessity of you know uh, the argued necessity of, of men and and uh you know what women are and are not capable of at least in in terms of the structures we've already built in society at this point um if that triggers you i'm sorry it's a great story but uh either way with pia guerrero's artwork you know you get this really great consistent style that's not not overly detailed but still very crisp very clean with with wonderful colors throughout and uh it's a really again a really interesting sci-fi idea that uh, that brian k vaughn uh, does a great job of executing and um it's got one of the most powerful and emotional endings um, I think I've ever read. It's uh, definitely something that that, that got the, the tear ducts going. Um, very, very powerful stuff. You absolutely fall in love with so many characters in this book. It's something truly great. And it's, uh, again, where Brian K. Vaughn shines is with, with his independent works where he can really De, you know, deconstruct these characters and, and and reconstruct them again as better better characters. Maybe with you know learning small lessons along the way, you get to see these little changes and tweaks in their in their actions and, and their dialogue. It's so well done, and um, you he he just makes them so personable and, and he gets you so attached to them. Ah, it, it's it, it's so well done. I love Brian K. Vaughn for that reason. He's one of my favorite writers. Um, I, I'm always excited whenever there's a new title that he's working on. I, I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to keep me wanting more. The only problem with Brian K. Vaughn is his work is all binge. Like he, I, I can't wait month to month. I could not imagine waiting month to month for Saga. I just couldn't. I couldn't. It's something you have to binge because again, the cliffhangers, the opening sequences, he just keeps you wanting more and more and more. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking about him and let you guys get to reading some of his comic books. Hopefully I gave you guys enough to check out. Um, if I didn't, if I missed any great titles, let me know down below. Again, I know he's done a whole bunch with Marvel and DC. Didn't really want to talk about that because it's great work, but nowhere near as good as his creator owned stuff. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell as well. YouTube will let you know whenever we post a new video or go live. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Stay safe and stay classy, Internet.